Okay, this is going to be the section on religious violence. We are still within the realm of institutional violence. So this is um, what we're going to cover. The definition of different areas of religious violence, um, religious tradition and theology and how it relates to violence, cults, um, religious wars and crusades, terrorism, persecution of heretics and non-believers, uh, clergy violence, and then we'll talk about violence within the organization and hierarchy. So since we're in institutional violence, it is violence that is committed by agents of religious organizations. The actors are acting within the context of a position within that organization, Religious beliefs and organization establish the context for the action. So this is not a clergyman who is at home um, out of out of garb, um, you know. Uh, propositioning a, a person um, outside of any religious role. This is him acting as a member of the church and then using that position to then commit acts of violence against others. So make sure you're remembering the context and the institutional part of it. Um, areas of religious violence, um, there's violent traditions and rituals, uh, cult violence and terrorism, wars and crusades, missionaries, military conquest, imperialism, uh, clergy violence, the sexual assault cases, and then the uh, heretics and non-believers persecution. So... First and foremost, violence is an integral part of religious tradition and theology. Some religions explicitly incorporate violence into their theology, making aggression a virtue. There are um, just a couple of examples here. Uh, the Assassins is an extremist branch of Islam in response to the First Crusade, um, trained to take out politicians and other uh, rulers. Um, the Thugi, this is a sect of a polytheistic Hindu religion. Um, they were part of an intergenerational multifamily cartel. Um, they use sacred uh, weaponry. <laughs> um in their acts of violence. Major world religions such as Judaism, Christianity, and Islam graphically glorify and legitimize violence within their scriptures. Um, here's a couple of examples, um, one from the Bible and one from the Quran. Um, I'll let you read through them. Uh, religious sacrifice, um, Aztec ritual um, is depicted here at the bottom. And here at the top is a uh, body that was found in Argentina uh, of a 15 year old Incan girl who died of uh, human sacrifice. Cult violence, um, defining a cult um, as a cohesive group of people um, 
often relatively small, relatively new religious movement uh, devoted to beliefs or practices that the surrounding culture or society considers to be outside of the mainstream and radical. Uh, cult violence involves violence or bleh, involves violence in which um, cults can be both victims and offenders. There's cult on cult violence. There's also violence connected with um, deprogramming, which is directed at cult members. Um, ritual suicides is a part of this cult violence. Um, those who are um, not familiar, the Heaven's Gate cult and the uh, Jim Jones were probably two of the most famous. Um, the Heaven's Gate cult, um, this was a mass suicide um, in California in the late 90s. Um, that corresponded with the um, orbit of the hale comet, um, the uh, leader of Heaven's Gate believed that um, this Marshall Applewhite gentleman um, believed that this mass suicide would um, enable the followers to uh, gain access to the comet, um, which was actually a spacecraft of some kind. Um, they covered themselves in blankets, uh, lay in the beds. Um, it was very ritualistic. Uh, they all took cyanide. Um, the People's Temple, uh, this was Jim Jones, um, this was in the late 70s, this was started, um, I believe in California, I could be wrong, um, they got quite, uh, infamous, they moved to Guyana, and um, everything just kind of took off. There were some allegations of um, child abuse. So a congressman and some other officials um, went down there to pick up some defectors who wanted to leave. And then in the process of attempting to board a plane to leave, <clears throat> Jim Jones um, opened fire on the congressman, uh, killing the congressman. And then um, once the defectors were killed and there was no one to um, escape, um, he ordered the mass suicide um, via poisoned Kool-Aid um, of over 900 people, including 276 kids. Um, so that's that part. Um, pathological or, you know, quote unquote deviant religions um, have incorporated violence into their tenets. Um, Hitler regarded his role in the growth of the Third Reich as a one of a messiah. Um, the Christian constitutionalists, the order, Aryan nations, creativity movement, um, passe comitatus have incorporated, um, religious justifications for violence in their ideologies, um, 
of militant resistance. Um, so most of these are hate groups, um, but they use religious justifications, um, which allows them to then fall in line with um, religious violence. Um, the Branch Davidians, um, this is a uh, piece of the Seventh-day Advents. Uh, this was the Waco, Texas incident um, in the 90s with David Koresh. The um, members believed that man can cleanse his soul by killing. Um, Um, I think it's um, AUM. Um, they were the ones responsible for the poisoning of the Tokyo transit system um, several years ago. Uh, killed 12, but thousands of others were injured. Um, religious wars and crusades. Wars between the defenders of separate religions and crusades are the violent outcomes of collisions among these competing systems. Um, religious wars have also served to legitimate imperialistic conquest of other nations. Um, they're quote unquote um, saving them uh, by means of an, a religious enlightenment, um, when in reality they're taking their land, their resources, their markets. Um, but if they're doing it under the guise of, you know, we need to save these people because they're. Um, They can't, uh, they can't find um, salvation in the ways that they're living right now, and it's our duty to, um, you know, enlighten them on, on religion, and in so doing also, you know, um, pretty much rape and pillage their culture. Um, 14 million people died in Germany during the 16th century as a result of a 30-year war between the Catholic League and the Protestant Union. Um, 400 years of Indian wars and conquest um, in North America. This was definitely a, you know, we need to enlighten them. Um, for their own good, they need it, um, <clears throat> those types of justifications. Uh, religion and military conquest, some more. Um, the Crusades um, were approximately eight wars um, to take over the Holy Land from the Muslims. Uh, lasted about 200 years. Many of these wars, which were sanctioned by the Pope, were ways to acquire new territory for the church and uh, nobility. Um, if you remember at the time, the church was very much intertwined with the government and um, kings and whatnot. So um, if they needed more land or wanted more land, he could just have the Pope justify this type of um, action and the people would be more willing to go along with it. Um, the Crusades focused primarily on the Middle East. However, later um, they got into North and Eastern Europe and they lasted um, through the 16th century. 
the American Empire and our missionaries, um, we're involved in this too. Um, one front involved the political and military strategy that drove the Indian people from their land to make room for the um, more civilized conqueror. Um, it deprived the Indian people of many of any type of self-governance or self-determination. Um, the second front after the politi the the military came through was just as thought out and decisive in the conquest of the Indian population. This was the religious one that the missionaries did from all denominations. It wasn't just um, it wasn't just um, you know Quakers or Protestants or any, it was all denominations that were here um, were going out and um, trying to uh, save these um, Indians that had been displaced. Um, genocidal violence uh, directed at the indigenous populations of North America was cultural, spiritual, physical. Um, this um, researcher, uh, Tinker, um, claims that the cultural destruction led to the physical destruction. Uh, the missionaries utilized different forms of cultural genocide, um, political, economic, religious, and social. Religious missionaries um, over the past 500 years have played an important role in furthering the spread of empires, notably in the conquest of the Americas, Africa, Asia, by European powers. Um, they've played the role of assimilators for those who have been conquered. They function as a mechanism of social control as they establish these symbolic internal mechanisms to coerce conformity to the con to the culture that has taken them over. Um, Tinker argues that Christian missionaries throughout North America were partners with the state in this genocide of indigenous people. They were guilty of, or he argues that they were guilty of complicity in the destruction of their culture, uh, social structures, um, and the impoverishment and death of the people that they preach to. Uh, he also claims that the violence directed at the indigenous populations was cultural and spiritual as well as physical. Uh, religious conflict, um, violence in Ireland is, it's part religious, it's also partially um, empirical. Uh, the Catholics were the indigenous Irish, and the Protestants were the settlers from the British Empire. And Ireland was England's first overseas uh, conquest in regards to territory. Um, here we see a train set on fire by a mob in India. Um, this was from 2002. The day after the train fire, um, Local authorities blame the attack on a uh, 
platform um, conflict that occurred between um, Muslim tea vendors and chanting Hindus. Um, but this sparked um, a lot of Hindu Muslim violence. The death toll from the attack was, I think it's 53. Um, this ended up setting off riots and attacks um, that killed almost 500 people. Um, after this train attack, um, this is an article from the New York Times. Um, this is a description of uh, the rioting that occurred. Um, keep in mind, this is 2002, um, and they're doing these types of things in broad daylight. Um, terrifying. Um, religious terrorism and terrorism is a very loaded and ambiguous word. Um, it's, it's purely relative. Um, if a group that we approve of is using violence, as, and we refer to it as heroic freedom fighters, um, but for groups that we view as um, combatants or as the enemy, um, then these are people that we refer to as ruthless and sociopathic and terrorists. Um, they're the same actions. It's just which side of the line you're standing on and which group you're talking about. Um, it would be a mistake to limit the domain of terrorism to small groups that cause political, social disruption. Um, Religious terrorism emphasizes civilian casualties, um, which essentially means non-combatant persons um, or people with no intense ideological passion. Um, they're just doing their normal thing, walking through the streets, going to the grocery store, taking their kids to daycare, whatever. Um, and then they end up becoming victims um, in spontaneous, unpredictable um, ways. So here's a couple of examples of terrorism, old and new. Um, the Sunni and Shi'i in Iraq. Um, this has been going on for a while. I'll allow you to read through it. Um, You know, there's a struggle between the groups, and then things get out of hand with activists. Um, then there's these, the, the ancient example, this is the Palestinians. Um... It's very similar if you go back and forth between the two as far as um, fighting domestic rule, resisting foreign powers, um, stuff like that. Read through that. 
that's not going to be on the test. Um, this is um, something that I would encourage everyone to read over. Um, I'm obviously not going to sit here and read through all of it to you as I feel you're perfectly capable. Um, but this challenges the assumption um, of what terrorism is, what our um, views are of dominant religions versus those outside of our culture, um, viewing um, religious figures as characters in a historical context and being able to look at their actions objectively um, you know was Jesus a revolutionary who could have been defined as a terrorist at the time um, against the Roman rule um, many would argue yes Absolutely. Um, but this shows the context and how it's very easy to decide when and where to use the word terrorism based on one's position um, at the large world table. Um, assassination of... Uh, religious leaders. This is something that's become quite popular. Um, it definitely increased um, under Obama's administration and is um, still skyrocketing um, under Trump. The use of drones to um, strike down uh, religious leaders and propagandists in the Middle East. Uh, the persecution of heretics and non-believers. Uh, there was persecution of messiahs during the first century. Um, the most systematic persecution was the Spanish Spanish Inquisition um, this is the um, either non-believers or those that question religious faith um, being tortured killed um, and everything in between for their religious beliefs, um, non-conforming, uh, persecution of men and women. Um, there was the, those accused of being witches in Europe and as well as the American colonies, um, estimates of between 40 to 50,000 people died. Um, The nativists um, in the 19th and 20th centuries engaged in this. The religious colonies in the 17th and 18th century. Um, Iranian theocracy in the 1980s did this. Um, I mean, obviously, they weren't just burning witches. They were hanging them as well. Um This bottom picture here is of a couple of, uh, they are believed to be uh, 14 and 16 year old boys. Um, this was in 2005. They were hanged in a public square. Um, 
course, they did engage in witch burning as well, though. Um, this is a young mother accused of sorcery. Um, she was stripped, uh, tortured, tied up, covered in gas, and set um, on fire um, with a pile of trash. Um, this was in New Guinea. They, the claim was that she killed a six-year-old boy in the village using sorcery. Um, the, the police weren't able to save her, though, um, as there were too many other villagers that were coming for her. So all they could do was watch. Oh, and um, oh, I don't have a year on there. I will have to look and see when exactly that was. It wasn't as long ago as one would hope. Um, clergy violence is definitely probably what's in everyone's forefront um, when we talk about religious violence. It's definitely made um, the most of media um, over the past several years. This actually started in the mid-80s. Um, these allegations of clergy physically and sexually abusing boys and girls, teenagers, women. Um, but since the mid-90s, more than 130 people have come forward. Just about this one gentleman. Um this former priest, uh, John Jehan, Jehan, um, apparently he had over three decades, um, where he was, um, assaulting, um, children in Boston. Um, Estimates of clergy abuse, these numbers are changing literally every couple of months. Um, those who watch the local news, the uh, Fort Wayne Diocese um, recently published a list of um, credible al uh, allegations against um, clergy within the Fort Wayne and Muncie area. Um, so locally, uh, the numbers have gone up as well. Um, but obviously, um, I mean, clergy are supposed to be celibate, um, but they, there's, um, Estimates, obviously, um, about their, um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for here? Um, their sexual activity. Um, in 1993, they had a self-report that found over a third of various denominations, not just Catholics, um, have admitted to inappropriate sexual contact um, with members of their parish. Um, denominational surveys have been done um, between approximately two and a half to seven percent. Um, of dioceses have had sexual abuse allegations levied against their priests. Um, I'm assuming that number has gone up quite a bit. Um, there was an internal church report that claimed that one in five and one in three clergy and laywomen had been sexually harassed by um, men within their church. 
And then um, in 2000, um, the study um, from Texas found that 5% of respondents knew firsthand about someone who had experienced clergy abuse. And 3% of the ones they talked to had actually experienced it firsthand themselves. So that speaks right there for how, um, how widespread this type of behavior is. Here are some uh, charts. Um, most of the abuse allegations um, and those that have been substantiated report that the abuse began in the 60s. And that was really the height of when this type of stuff occurred. Granted, it's still occurring, but it has dropped off as far as um, how often it's happening. Um, this just kind of goes over the types of um, allegations that have been made. Um, this is everything from sexual talk and showing pornography to um, sexual acts themselves. Uh, religious violence and the hierarchy of the organization. Um, as we said in the beginning, any organization that has a hierarchy of power and religious organizations, especially since they have a system and levels of authority in which people are trusted, these are supposed to be trusted members of society. Um, the followers, believers, they drop their guard when dealing with these people. Um, they assume that they're going to be shown benevolence and integrity and ethical professionalism. Um, church groups, since they are extremely bureaucratic, shield abusers longer than smaller congregational groups. Um, hierarchy, hierarchical groups um, provide religious leaders with more opportunity to rationalize, um, dismiss claims, um, but at the same time, they're more likely than congregational groups to develop policies that address the abuse. But hierarchical groups due to the layers of authority, um, traditions, even though they promote ambivalence at first, um, they fear the retaliation from those um, higher up for whistleblowing, um, but ultimately they empower them to protest um, more than congregational groups. So there's kind of pros and cons to whether the organization is hierarchical or if it's congregational. Um, with the Catholic diocese, obviously, and the Catholic church, um, very much a hierarchical group. Um, there was a lot of moving around of clergy members to um, uh, remove the uh, offending priest to a different location um, to quote unquote take care of the problem and then not report that behavior to those above them, um, which is how this went on for so long. Um, they have been relatively swift though to. Um, address the matter and um, the Pope has um, dismissed multiple uh, members of the church for 
either not addressing it appropriately or um, or attempting to hide it. Um, so there are differences, but it's still a problem. <laughs> Okay, um, I think this is the last little bit here. Um, suicide bombers. Oh, I'm not sure why this is in this last piece right here. I guess not. I don't remember putting this here. I, that's okay. Um, so... Suicide bombers, these are, um, a form of religious violence, obviously. These are not people who are generally, um, there's no, uh, one group or one organization or one, um, country or religious, uh, background that, um, these come from. Um, the context um, suicide bombing becomes um, an extreme form of Adaptation. It's not a crazed act of a crazy person. It's a social ritual. Um, if we look at kamikazes, which um, we had talked about, I believe, in the last section... Um, these are people who were willing to die for the state. Um, this is very much the same idea. These are people who um, believe that they are dying for the good of their religious organization. Um, they are, um, as, as this guy says here, um, a psychologist, he doesn't know any of them who are psychotic. So this isn't a case of crazy people. Um, these are people who are doing what they feel is appropriate for making their religious statements. Um, so we can't be quick to dismiss um, that they justify this. Um, but as with all the acts of religious violence that we've talked about, they've all been um, justified by religion. Um, talking to the enemy. This is an interesting book. Um, this guy actually went and surveyed um, failed suicide bombers and the families of those who were successful. Um, he found that they were well-educated, mostly middle class, they weren't desperate or acting out of despair. Um, they're recruited. They're supported by terrorist organizations um, using religious rites to um, make like a communion and a bonding um, between the, the would-be bombers. Um, there's no reason to believe that they're poor or illiterate or um, anything like that. Um, they're middle-class college kids. Um, 
who are completely ingrained in this ideology um, that they're willing to die for and kill others for. So if you get a chance to check it out, it's very interesting. It's on Amazon. Um, so characteristics of suicide bombers. Excuse me. Um, so obviously there's, um, most of the ones that are in this database are, um, Palestinians, um, in Israeli prisons and stuff like that. Um, a higher percentage of the Shahids had experience in the use of violence than um, the Palestinians did. Um, they weren't newcomers. Um, suicide bombers are somewhat older. Um, so there's no real uh, concrete um, profile of what a suicide bomber looks like. Um, sorry if that last little bit there seemed a bit, um, unput together. Um, I think it got moved it within my presentation. I'm pretty sure that part was supposed to be, um, at the beginning <laughs> or closer to the beginning. Um, so religious violence is not an aberration. It's a normal patterned, um, expected, um, it's along the same structural, historical, symbolic lines that all inequality and oppression and ras rationalization occurs. Um, when we look at the victims of religious violence, these are the least powerful, um, that have the highest levels of victimization, just like all the other types. The relation of religion and violence is twofold. Religious leaders and the beliefs that they preach have led to direct violence. And religion has served to facilitate and maintain some very violent modes of political conquest and economic exploitation and the resistance to it. So not only does religion provoke violence directly by what the preachers preach, but it also acts as a cover and a context to justify and facilitate violence. So that's religious violence. Um, as I've said in multiple sections, if you have questions, feel free to post, uh, feel free to email me. Um, if you are wanting to do religious violence for your institutional uh, case study, um, there have been tons of cases um, locally and uh, nationwide regarding um, clergy violence. Um, it would definitely not be difficult to find material. Um, so that's an idea if anybody's looking at it. So have a good one.